This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kick bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Listener shoving on 96.9 The Fox in Appleton, Wisconsin. Also 105.3 The Bear in Blacksburg, Virginia. It is the random question question also on tap today. Your guess is as good as mine. Ask the men's room. We will drink a toast with a shot of the day and uh, profile this. A random question question. What pledge or thing have you promised that you'd never do? A lot of celebrities like to unwind with a round of golf. But you never catch the guys in U2 on the golf course. And that's because in the beginning, they promised each other they would never play golf. Bono recently said, quote, you two made a pledge early on as teenagers, actually, when we formed the band that the one thing that we would never, ever, ever do, and it was a sacred pledge, was to play golf. And simply because we just didn't think it was rock and roll enough. And even though they were in Ireland, the home of golf and everything else, they said, yeah, it just I mean, didn't seem like a rock and roll thing look, to do. I'm not a big golf guy. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're not. But it just seems like of all the things that we pledge not to do, man. We pledge as a band, we're not going to stab anybody in the eye. We're not going to play ice. Not like, hey, we're not going to do drugs. We're not going to drink. Like, anybody can do that. Sure. Zeppelin used to say, we're never going to sell out. We're never going to be on commercials. And nah, 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 nah. Been a long time since I rock and roll. The new Cadillac. <laughs> you know, exactly. you're like, oh, well, they're cashing in now. But I think now. golf definitely has a stigma. So they're just, I think that's why they were like, we don't want to be a part of it. Yeah, I do get I'm just saying, as far as, like, because they've been around, what, 40 years now? They probably had this pledge for 45, 50 years. But it's like... All right, you said you're not going to play golf. What is the stigma of Come golf, on. do you think? Rock and roll? I'll tell you what I think. They're the stigma of be rock golf? and roll. What, what is, is the it? stigma of golf? At least, at least as far as the workplace is concerned. It's just hoity-toity. Yeah, yeah. all right. It's where okay. douchebags yeah. go to be douchebags. Okay. That's the perception. So in rock and roll, I don't know, yeah. Alice Cooper, play, plenty of people play golf. But it's the stigma. It's always been a rich dude sport. That's sure. why he's always sure. portrayed, right. blah, 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 blah. So if you're, you're a teenager in a rock band, like, dude. We're going to throw down, we're going to drink tomorrow, 6 a.m. Sure, tea time. Sure. It just it doesn't work. Here's where I figured out the negative. And there's a lot of negative stereotypes around golf, obviously, and golf has earned that reputation. But I played golf since I've been seven or eight years old, and I like golf. It used to be an affordable sport where you could go out and get out of the house and play and all that stuff. The difference between golf as a child, which I really enjoyed playing, sure. and golf as an adult, is there's one thing that pisses people off more than anything else about golf. And that is the fact that if people play golf... They play it when they're supposed to be working. Mm. Now, if somebody comes up and says to me, <laughs> no, I mean, that's serious. If someone comes up and says to me, oh, man, I'm thinking about playing 18 on Saturday, you know what I mean, then going over to a buddy's house, I'm like, oh, cool, man, have a great time. But if I know for a fact one of the people who work here is golfing, I'm pissed. Oh, sure. It makes me mad because I know damn well, like, well, they're on a sales call. Or, well, they're doing it. I'm like, no, they're not. They're golfing. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, that's the thing with golf. And, that's, like, no one would care if President Trump golfed. No one would care that well, President Obama uh, golfed. But when you call people out on it, they care. But either way, they don't care if you about should that. Be working. They care if you should be working. That, that's, that's all it is. All it is, man. <laughs> it's so simple. The other problem with golf is too, like, you know, like I can't tell you how many times people are like, "You got to learn to play golf." And I used to really like golf. Sure. But they go, "Business deals get done on the golf course." No. Everybody says, right? So I mean, that's why golf, I think, kind of rightfully has that stigma yes, because there's no other sport like. But I don't know. But, but it's happening reason, during work right. hours. That's why they said, look, there's a reason why certain sayings exist. I'm convinced of this. So the people that played golf when they should be working were the bosses, and they had no problem telling you, hey, I'm going to go play golf because there's nothing you we can do. He was a boss and play but, golf three days a week. I know exactly who you're talking about. But but what would he say? It's where business deals get done. Sure. Because, and they came up with that saying because they wanted to go play golf. If we right. said, hey, man, we're not going to do the show on Friday because we got this great business opportunity for everybody. We're going to go shoot golf. They fire our ass. It's right? like saying uh, the bedroom where real estate deals are made. You right? I mean? like, come on. You know who said it's, come on. it's good luck when it rains on your wedding? The person who got married when it was raining outside. Yep. That's yeah, how like, it you goes. only play random games of basketball before or after work. Not during. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. And if you did. And you could do the same thing. I could talk to a guy about done. a business deal and be like, you're a ball. It's not good enough. We, we, right? But it would, it would never fly. We could go to lunch for two hours. We can't go play golf for four and a half. Well, we could go to, look, every business deal I've ever had to close, I've done at a bar. Hey, well, hey, we're talking business. Let's go get drunk in the yeah, middle yeah. of the day. You frown on it. Yeah. And, uh, and man, I've, and, and, and you do make a lot of connections out there getting drunk at a tournament or whatever. Don't get me getting wrong. Getting drunk anywhere, you make connections, yeah. man. They, look, it's not about golf, it's about alcohol. 
You could do it at the strip club. You could do it at the bar. You could do it on a plane. It does. If you add alcohol, business gets done. And the golf thing, I respect him for that. Like I've, I've had to relent on a lot of my eyes. Oh, I'll never do that. We watch Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, I don't really care. And it's not like Star Wars isn't like Friends, where Friends is on all the time, so it's harder to miss. Like Star Wars isn't on that often, right? But you just but, said, like, I never watched no, it. People me, gave you hell about it. And it's did. on often in my home. Come on over. So the big one point. for me, though, is just cocaine. Okay. Like, I've made it this far. Star Wars feel, to cocaine. Yeah, I Star Wars to cocaine. But <laughs> Star Wars, I might watch. But at, Why like, don't we get a big... at my late 30s, like, <laughs> I've had enough ISIS. I'm good. What Ted, if we get a big box of <laughs> cocaine and watch Star Wars? And then binge on Star Wars. You're it, not going to sleep. The problem is, though, I could watch that Star Wars. But then it, I wouldn't... It, within a year, it, it'll fall apart. Quickly. Then you have to watch the next one. No, I'd be hooked on cocaine. <laughs> I know random, 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 As far as things random, that you would not, random, or things you random, swore random, off when doing it, so it's definitely not drinking random, liquid cocaine random, ever again. Oh God! Oh no, 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 that's a drink. I used no, to make no, no, no. We understand oh. that. That's that's a comment. <laughs> They're saying they would not drink liquid cocaine, yeah. and then also I pay day loans. So yeah. it's never again. That's strong. And then my, you said uh, Long Island Iced Tea. We already know this, but someone wanted to remind you. Long Island Iced Tea is one dollar Applebee's. Applebee's. That's right. Try them again. Mm-hmm. Applebee's, listen, I love you. God bless you, man. But who signed off on that? Do Bud Light. Do something like that, man. Not Long Island Iced Teas. It's going to be, it's five gonna be, and gonna be a good sleep. month in the hood. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Feeling good. <laughs> Hello, Renee. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 All right, Renee. Oh, and by the way, uh, Miles, everyone wants to. Golf is from Scotland, not Ireland. Golf in Scotland is oh, not Ireland. Right, right. I almost said it's that. All, but I was it's like, all the same. Oh, my God. It's like saying it's not in Tacoma. It's in Seattle. It's the same damn thing. <laughs> Jesus. Well, two separate countries. I know that, but my God, they're five miles apart. <laughs> I mean, no, they're farther than that, but you get the idea. Come on, man. It's, it's a small little island in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, what's all right? I mean, we invented the burrito, right? Yeah, hell yeah, we did. The mission style where we put crappy <laughs> rice in there. <laughs> Renee, let's go with this one. What would you say is the worst thing that you did as a kid? When did you get into the most trouble? Or just based on like what you know of yourself now as a person, maybe you look back and you think to yourself, well, I was kind of mean to that person. Or oh. what, 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 where, do you, where do you think you, you kind of crossed the line? I, I never did anything bad. Um, BS. I, was, I, I swear to God, I never skipped class. I never drank. I didn't drink till I was 21. I didn't do anything bad. When did you um, lose your virginity? I'm just curious. I was 20. Okay. So right. I was only 14, but yeah, other exactly. than that. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, when I was like five years old, my neighbor and I found some baby birds that had fallen out of their nest. And we were like, that's awesome. Birds. We have pets now. And um, I got in big trouble for that because... Obviously, like, the mom wasn't going to take care of him anymore, so my parents had to deal with him. So, wait a minute. The, the biggest trouble you've gotten into is that when you were five years old, you did what any innocent five-year-old kid would do. Try to save And tried to rescue pets. some damn baby. I thought you were going to say you hit him with a hammer or something. I beat a bird to death really bad. Stick when I was a kid. What? I beat um, a little baby bird to death with a stick when I was, like, three or four years old. Why? My mom thought I was going to do Why would you do that? I didn't know. I don't even remember. What do you mean you didn't know? I don't remember. You beat a I baby bird I don't with remember. a... I don't With remember, a stick? I don't remember the incident, but I always remember my mom like, I think he's going to be a serial killer. Yeah! <laughs> God damn, man. At least no, Renee here tried to save no, him. No, I did. I'm just being honest. She thinks she was bad because right. she tried to save Renee, baby birds. Renee, what do you do? What do you do for a living now? You're like a caregiver, a social... You're a receptionist. Okay, all right. Well, see, I, I think we just learned a lot more about Miles. Yeah. A lot Dude, of things are adding up now. Renee is remember, fine. I don't remember. She tried to... We just... How old are you, Renee? I'm, I'm 27. You're 27. Today's my birthday. We asked. Oh, oh happy, happy birthday. birthday, Renee. Happy birthday, Renee. Thanks. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Bird saver. Okay. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I'm glad you saved some birds because I, I, I was wiping them out. Renee, if I even met you, if we shook hands, we would both disappear. Mm hmm. Probably. We would annihilate each other. I cannot believe that the bad thing that she has done in her life, you have to go back to five years old. That's impressive. It's, it, but, it's, but it wasn't even bad. It's just one of those dumb things that five-year-olds do. You know, like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, trust hey, me, uh, I've had many pet earthworms. I had a pet caterpillar that made it about three hours, and my oh. daughter had a pet. Oh, God damn, what did she have to have last year? I think it was a grasshopper or something, man. Oh, no, one of those roly-poly bugs, she calls it, potato bug, whatever it is. Those little gray yeah. things look like uncooked. Right. So I don't know what. I almost cuss. 
I don't know what her motivation was last summer, but she insisted mm-hmm. on having one of these goddamn things as a pet. I tried to talk her out of it for like eight straight hours, but I'm working outside. The thing is, no matter where you work outside, these freaking bugs are around. So she kept finding new pets. And finally, I'm like, dude, put it in a jar. She pokes some holes, threw a bunch of crap in there. And sure enough, the next day, there it is dead. Uh, and that's when she learned about death. You know what I feel the worst about as being a kid, though? This is, this, this is going to be worse. worse than beating a baby bird to the stick. As far as how I emotionally felt about the situation. No, see, but that, fact, that says a lot. I don't have any recollection of that incident. So it could have just been. Which is, means he has no remorse. Right. Just, right. Yeah. There's right. nothing. Exactly. Not a not, single I synapse fired in your brain. Because I don't remember. Like, I really don't remember it. So I, I wish there was a video of that. But, man, there was this kid named And Jamie. then we have the mowing incident. And we had. Uh, oh, yeah, man. Like Bunny dog incident. We had, a, we had a community hoop that didn't have a net, that kind of place. Course, yeah, that's came, how you know it's community. We all came and played basketball there, and that's what we did. There was one street like you could sometimes play into the evening, blah, 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 blah. There was this kid named JP, and JP was annoying as hell. Uh, he was a year older than us, but also still in our class. He might have been two years older than us. I'm not sure. We are 13, 14 years old at this point in time. JP comes down, starts running his mouth, doing his normal stuff. So for some reason, he, he's guarding me. He's got his hands out. And I look down. I'm like, JP, are those, are those whack-off marks all over your hand, man? <laughs> I was like, let me see that. You know how you have the M in the palm of your hand? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was right. like, oh, my God, you've got it. it that means masturbate. <laughs> And so I started, I started just going after him. I was like, how many times? I was like, do you realize how much you have to whack to get a mark on your hand like that? I was like, dude, are you doing it like three or four times? I was like, maybe twice, maybe. <laughs> and, he, and he started to cry, and he took off running home, man. <laughs> And I, I tried to catch like, oh, no. and, then, and then like when I tried, like I, I did try later on to talk to him. He's like, no, don't talk to me. Like he would. I mean, I was like, dude, I was joking. It's a joke. Did he ever piece together that you I'm, were joking? I mean, I think he... as time goes on, you figured it. No, out. but how much time? I, I, did, said, like, I don't know. You didn't really come, come play basketball anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I felt terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do you think for like a year? He's I like, oh my god. I was like, JP, man, because I, I do remember talking to him. I was like, you know, I was just kidding, right? He's like, don't talk to me. <laughs> He ran home crying. Killing small animals and making other children <laughs> feel bad. Well, I'm the, and I'm masturbating like five times a day at this yeah, point. You know, yeah. exactly. And you got him to admit that he masturbates at least twice a day. <laughs> I mean, that's I'm the like, you're knocking one out four or five times a day. I don't know where you are, man. Random question, uh, question, 844 uh, More of your calls on the way. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Frill. Well, turn to ask the Men's Room coming up. If you have a question for any of us here in the Men's Room, just shoot us an email to the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com and make the subject Ask the Men's Room. We'll do Ask the Men's Room coming up right before we drink and toast with a shout of the day. Random, In the meantime, random, it is our random, random question, random, question, random, 844 ola Hello, random, Colin. Random, Welcome random, to the Men's Room. Random, 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 random. Hola. 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 Ah. Colin, how are you? Good, how are you guys doing? Doing great, man. Colin, let's go with this one. What would you say... Ha, ah, let me set this up right here. All right, you're going on a date. Let's assume you're single for a change, or whatever the deal is. And uh, you're bringing someone over, and you're going to cook for them. What would you say is the best thing that you can cook? The best thing you can make? Uh, you know, I'm probably going to go with what I'm going to cook tonight for dinner for... My family. I'm going to go with probably a cheeseburger quesadilla. Cheeseburger <laughs> quesadilla. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, explain how you make Ed, your famous Ed, you cheeseburger quesadilla. I have not, but I'm interested. Is it ground uh, ground beef and then cheese uh, between two tortillas? Yeah, I just brown up the meat. I kind of make like a, I don't know if you want to call it a Big Mac, like a homemade Big Mac sauce or what, how do you? What is your homemade Big Mac sauce? Big Mac sauce. What is your secret sauce, Colin? Sauce. Now, sauce. I, yeah, it's my it's my secret sauce. So I mean, I gotta kind of keep it secret, but I don't. Like, it don't matter to me. I I just go with like the generic. Well, be quiet. The generic uh, like ketchup and mayonnaise, but then I throw like uh, some yum yum sauce in it. All right, and you put that inside the quesadilla when you heat it, or do you put it on top when you're done? I I mix it all up and I. Like chop up a bunch of relish or I uh, pickle real thin, and I lather the tortilla in that. Put it on the burner, then put the gr- the brown meat on the cheese, melt it. So it's already on the tortilla, and then I just smush it all together and boom. Put the brown Cheeseburger case. So it's like a all Big right. Mac quesadilla, right. really. Essentially, yeah. Uh, over here in Montana, I kind of got the idea. Over here in Montana, there's like a funky uh, pizza joint where they have like bi- biscuits and gravy pizza. They got another one called a. Uh, the P, the PK Mac, where it's basically like a Big Mac pizza. How many of them? How many of those have you tried? How many of those have you tried? How many of those pizzas have you tried? 
Uh, at least those two. Okay. It's kind of out of the way, so it's kind of like how, that every now and then. Hey, is think. anything in Montana on the way? Like, to me, no matter where I am in Montana, anywhere else I have to go in Montana is somehow out of the way. Well, well let me put it this way. I drive uh, about three-hour commute every couple of days just to go to work. All right. so, God, what, is the, what is the biscuits and gravy pizza? I, I, do they put anything else on there? Do they put cheese on top of it? So it, it sounds weird, but it's probably the best thing you'll eat in your life. The cheese pretty much welds it all together and keeps it intact. So is the dough the biscuit, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's like homemade biscuit bread, and then oh. they just put the biscuits and gravy sauce all over it, and then they just put the cheese on top of that. Mm. And so when you pull it apart, it's not runny like normal biscuits and gravy. It's kind of just all on that. That yeah, sounds great. That does sound good. That sounds man. very good. I give that a shot. It, okay. It's really good. Wait, what's the name of the place? Uh, the, it's called the Powder Keg. The Powder, powder keg. keg. And what town's that in Montana? Oh, God. It's past uh, Sydney, Montana, a little ways. You're almost in North Dakota. So um, so Eastern I'm Montana. Thinking, good. Are you talking about down there? Uh, uh, I think technically it's down at Fairview. Reason. Yeah. I don't think yeah, we have any yeah, affiliates Fairview, close to there. It is Fairview. It. Ted actually got that right. It's Fairview. Fairview. How do you know Fairview, Because I Googled Montana. the name of the damn restaurant. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> Come that's on. what I was going to look like. Do they have pictures of this? Uh, do they have pictures of this? I'm going to have to look at those. Yeah, that's why we want to break the, the powder year. keg in Fairview, Montana. Okay. Right. What's the best thing you can cook, Ted? Ah, uh, I mean, not gr- crockpot uh, related, maybe. I mean, yeah, I was trying to make crockpot or grilling. If I was just going to cook a dinner, I'd probably just uh, well, I'd probably get some broccoli. Gee, and you don't cook even it, like it. Cook it in the oven, you know, mm-hmm. spice it up a little bit. What's it like that? Like the bat. The blast, <laughs> blasted broccoli, right? That's yeah. what it's called, blasted Not broccoli. the bastard broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> this piece here, it's got no dad. It's the baby broccoli, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd make broccoli and then some sort of chicken breast probably on the stove. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Steve, you've cooked for years. What would you? What would be your signature dish? I don't know. If I'm not baking anything, then I mean, I can make whatever it is but, I want to eat, I can make without question. Okay. Uh, the reason we asked, what is the best thing that you can cook? Uh, the whole point of a Waffle House is that it's always there for you whenever you need it. Breakfast, dinner, middle of the night, alone on Christmas, whatever. It, Coming I, down from a high and the it, mood to fight. It's, it's there. Uh, and that's one thing on about Christmas. it, man. You, do they put that in their sign? Hey, you're going to be alone on Christmas? No, nope, they're, they're, they're open. I know. Saying. They're open. Uh, so, so it's always there. <laughs> well, a 36-year-old guy named Alex Bowen was drunk on Wednesday night, and he went to Waffle House in West Columbia, South Carolina, which is what you do in West Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> But when he got there, the one employee working that night had fallen asleep in a booth. Oh. So Alex, he did what any of us would do. He hopped behind the counter and started cooking his own meal. <laughs> he said he cooked himself, quote, a double Texas bacon cheesesteak melt with extra pickles. <sighs> and then he posted all about it on Facebook, including pictures. A Waffle House spokesman says they apologized to Alex, suspended the employee who was asleep for one week, and they really hope that in the future, no customer goes behind the counter and makes their own food. I'm pretty sure he cleaned up, too. He did everything. Yeah. That's what I heard. Oh, he like, did the whole left thing. Left cash, did the whole thing. Like, he didn't steal anything. No. He, just, he made it himself. I liked it the Waffle House. And, and think about this, because this is, you know, once a story goes viral, these days, you just cut ties with whoever. I like it. It's like, look, we're going to suspend you for a week, because in the end, it's still the Waffle House. We're, we're not going to fire you, man. I would be so excited to go in the back yeah, of the notice, kitchen. Yeah, notice they didn't say Columbia. They said West Columbia. Dude, right. could you imagine being, <laughs> could you imagine being, and I know you you worked in a kitchen, so you can imagine it, and it sucks, but if no, you're, no, if you're, different, if, if you're in a restaurant, man, and you got carte blanche on the kitchen, sure. you could go in there and cook anything you wanted to, mm-hmm. I mean, that would be awesome. I would just be so, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I'd be so excited, like a blooming onion. Whatever, like that's you know what where I mean? you go. Well, the I mean, blooming, you know what I mean. Like, I go to any I restaurant. I can't make it at home. Make anything. So now we're at an outback. Yeah, we're we're and now we got steaks. No, we're frying up steaks. You do make a good point because you know we've said this before. The Aussie cheese fries are freaking unbelievable. You can go to the grocery store and you can buy anything that a restaurant has, anything. and it's never as good. So you're right. Like you will never. And I don't care who you are. Don't email. Don't don't comment nothing. I can't you turn can't on the, recreate no. a blooming onion at home. I can't turn you on can, the deep fryers in my house. You can do something close, but it's right. not going to be. And, and a blind taste test, I'm telling yeah. you, 100 percent of the time, we'd be like, "This Dude, one's homemade." You, you would be this dropping mozzarella is. sticks. We'd be dropping sure. chicken wings. We'd be dropping. If they had onion rings, they'd go in the. I mean, you name it, it's going in the basket. It's going to get fried. We're cooking up on the grill. I've, just, I've done steaks. it. You, like, you, you've raided a, a restaurant and cook whatever. Well, no, you want. like, but I mean, like when we worked at this, when we all worked at the same bar. Like there was just certain times at night, or you sure. close and be like, 
all right, do you want something to eat? Like, all right, we'll turn on the fryers or cook a burger. All right. Like, now, there's very specific things you can make. Okay. Right. The deep fryers are key. Because, and we've said this before. Other than tater tots, if you go to the store and buy anything that you'd normally eat deep fried at a restaurant, I don't know how to spell this, but this should be the company name. Because your fries are never never yeah. remotely going to be as good as baked mozzarella sticks. Like the kids, we get into this stuff, right? And I got them some mozzarella sticks, and they look awesome, right? But I baked them, I bite into it, and I'm like, this is crap. I don't think this I could. I don't think I work my magic as well in the PF Changs. I'm not to operate a wok, but I wouldn't be nearly as good. And I wouldn't be, you know what I mean? I'd be like, all right, whatever. You think they use the wok a lot, PF. Tonight. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think so. I'd right. be on the deep fryer. I'd be making crab rangoon, uh, egg rolls. You know what I mean? That kind of yeah. Thing. Me and my buddy go to P.F. Chang's. That's what we get. Maybe can you, uh, uh, can you do it from the beginning, right? So they say, look, welcome to P.F. Chang's. We do have delicious food, but you have to make your own crab rangoon. I know you can drop a handful in, but if they said, here's the uh, Cream stuff. cheese and crab, I'm assuming. But you got to fold it over oh, right, man. make a little bag uh, of money and drop it in the, uh, <sighs> drop I mean, it in in the, theory, in the deep fryer. Right. To go back to like rolling joints or slips or whatever, I feel like I could make a good dumpling. I could, too. Oh yeah, have you ever made dumplings? It's just a little, it's just Negative. a piece of little dough, man. And right. You put the but little I've ball in the middle, my, so, and then you make own, a little bag of money. It's easier than that. It's uh, so when you make a dumpling, it, it's already like a round, a pretty rounded thing, it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's about it how you seal it, bro. You don't seal it right. It blows up in the deep fryer, and all your crap just burns so you get up. Twist it a little bit at the top. I don't know, man. A lot of people just use the fork thing. Some people wet it. Mm. It's uh, trust me, it's it's a I lot think, of trial uh, in there. I think Cheesecake Factory would be the ultimate. Oh. Hey, I'm in here in this kitchen and it's closed experience. I think that would be the spot where you could just lose your mind. The difference, uh, and I'm gonna be honest with Cheesecake Factory. Unlike every other restaurant that I plan on breaking into now, I am not going to use your deep fryers. I'm going to straight up lift your cheesecake. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't bother with anything. Really? Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd be. I would up go in. in P.F. Chang's. I'm eating everything they got in the uh, walk-in. But Cheesecake Factory, the food is good. But I'm just stealing their Oreo cheesecake. They've got chicken. Gone. They, they've got uh, they've got fried chicken sliders that are just. I mean, I know. I'd have those in the basket, man. Random, like we're having random, sliders. Random, 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 I'm not random, saying I wouldn't eat random, it. Random, I'm saying I'd be gripping random, the cheesecake random, while you cook. Random, random, Hello, random, Mark. Random, Welcome to the men's room. Perfect in movies, bitches. Hola. Let's see here. What do we got for you? Okay. Out of all the people that you've taken a picture with, what picture would you show us? That you have a picture with. The person, the dog, the situation. Maybe you have the pyramids behind you. Maybe you have a picture with the but, situation. But who do you have a picture with? What What, what is going on behind you? Your, your, your craziest picture. Um, not my picture taken with. I can't remember what her name was. She was in a, uh, an actress. Ran into her in an airport when I was like 17. She was in uh, Moonlighting. What was Sybil Shepherd? Sybil Shepherd. I'll uh, gladly take a picture okay. with you, well, young was, man. Well, she was uh, she was like a, a huge star at that point in time. Yeah, she was, and she was really sweet about posing for a picture. And I looked like really innocent, but I was not. So as I had my arm around her, of course, you know the hand slipped and got a you know handful of booby. Oh my God! You not grabbed Sybil Shepherd's booby. Hey, come on, really? Al Franken no is listening to this. And then I went on and ran for what? Senate. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jesus. That was like. And, I, I don't think she really thought it was anything other than an accident because I had, like, that really dark look. Man, look, young, let me tell you something. That was my go-to. You were roughly 17 years old, and one of the beauties of yeah. being older is that there's nothing that a 17-year-old does that you don't already under. And that tip, like, you're a 17-year-old young man. There's nothing except sex on your brain. Nothing. Man. Do they even give that Rorschach eat block test to a 17-year-old guy? Vagina. Yeah, exactly. Vagina. Boobs. Vagina. <laughs> boobs. Vagina. Vagina. The reason we asked, who do you have a, uh, a picture with? Uh, Santa Claus is back at the mall, as we all know. And uh, when you're kids, man, you go in there, you, you want to get your picture taken with Santa. Uh, that's, that's just part of the deal, right? Some kids do. Some, some more some than Some do. Others. What? Some have been talked out of it? No, it's not that. I'll just put it this way. A lot of kids freak out. Uh, <laughs> my daughter... No problem. Yeah. She already has her list, and she can tell you all 800 okay. things that she needs. My son, if he does not know you, regard, and it's like, dude, it's freaking Santa Claus, man. Like, that's the guy. And he's like, but he knows if I'm good. Mm -hmm. he, does, he doesn't want to talk to him, doesn't want to be near him. And every time I take a picture of him, it's like, my daughter has a smile from ear to ear, and my son looks exceptionally uncomfortable. Well, with modern times, cause uh, modern pricing, modern technology, and everything else. So, here you go. Malls all over the country have been jacking up their prices for photos with Santa. Damn, man. Here are some of the prices. At a Cherry Hill Mall in New Jersey, that's outside hey, of uh, Philadelphia. What you want for Christmas, little boy? Okay. Uh, all right. So you're in line. 
uh, waiting for Santa, right? All right. You've been waiting there for about a half an hour. Mm -hmm. And some jackass family just passes right by everyone in line and goes and gets their picture taken. Oh, they got like a VIP pass? No, they've got a fast pass, Ted. Mm -hmm. A fast, fast pass, pass to, to Santa. see Santa. Damn. And that helps you skip the line and costs you 15 bu uh, 50 bucks, and you get 14 different size prints. Let's go to the Gardens Mall in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Their packages begin at $29. The second one is 56 If you want to do multiple poses, it's another 20 If you want the digital file of the pictures, it's another 15 Biltmore Fashion Park, Phoenix, six prints, $40. The Grove in Los Angeles. Packages start at $40, and you don't even get any printed photos for that. You just get the pay. Then you have to buy the digital prints or the print prints. You follow it's, what I'm saying? It's $40 I mean, for the picture that you can't get yet until you pay for the picture. I didn't know. I didn't really know how the racket worked until like three years ago, I guess, taking the kids there. And so I never knew my parents had to do anything. You know, to me, it was magic. You sit on this dude's lap. Here's a picture. Off we go. Now, as the parent, you know, there's as your kid's sitting there, the elf, you know, some... 16 year old kid with pointy ears is explaining the business deal. So if you want blah, blah, blah. So they get upset, uh, not the kids, but, but the people that work there. Cause I'm like, dude, mm -hmm. I will take the one print. And they're like, well, you can send these to fan. Like, I will take one print and even then I have to find a place to put it. The most expensive, that would be New York City. There is a special studio for Santa photos. Package starts at $135. And if you want any retouching, you're looking at about three hundred and twenty-five on. dollars. Retouch your kids, $325. man. That's what I mean, I remember seeing Santa in the mall, and yeah. I'm sure I took some pictures with him, but it I didn't guess. seem like it had to be like this, this thing that had to happen. It wasn't like put it this. My parents never took me to the mall to see Santa. There's times they're at the mall, obviously shopping for Christmas or whatever, and. They'd ask if you wanted to see him, and only because you walked by. But you could tell it was an afterthought. Like, oh Jesus, hey. Do you want to talk to Santa? And even then, it was 50 50. Like, and I've always been impatient. So I'd look at the line and it's like, that's my problem. Nah, man. I, you know what I mean? And, and look, to me, the way I understood Santa Claus as a kid, it's like, basically, you're being surveilled by this dude all the time, right? He knows if you've been naughty or nice, if you're asleep. And so I'm like, dude obviously has eyes on me. He knows my transgressions. He knows where I've risen above, which is very few. I don't need to tell him. I wrote him a note. I put it in an envelope that said North Pole. And I watched you put the envelope that says North Pole. In the goddamn mailbox. I don't need to talk to him. And I think Santa, like, Santa's for children. If you're not a child, well, why don't we go ahead and stay off Santa's lap? If you're not there with children, eh. Who's sitting on Santa's lap? It's a big thing Adults, now. I mean. Mm -hmm. Adults really? like to do it, too. right? Oh, Whether or not on. they have children, but if they're a couple, they go get the picture. because of the social media world. Random. That's all right. But think Random. about Santa. Random. He doesn't want your heavy, Random. hairy, disgusting, Random. sinful Random. ass sitting Random. on him. I sat on him last Random. year. Random. God damn it, Miles. Random. Sure did. That's exactly Random. what I'm talking about. I got wallet-sized prints and handed them out to all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you guys didn't get in it. <laughs> exactly. That's why kids got to pay $45 <laughs> <laughs> to go see Santa now. Goddamn father's going to sit on my lap. media. Hello, Ken. Oh, Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor, Liquor and whores. All right, here, Ken. Let's go with this one here. Ken, uh, tough question for you, but what would you say is your all-time favorite cookie? What brand of cookie oh, is your number one cookie? Well, I guess it's not a particular brand, but, dude, I always have to go for the white chocolate macadamia nut, man. That one is always gets me. That one's always going to You know, house. man, I, I want to make fun of you because I hate what it's called. <laughs> but uh, I think it was Subway, right? So Subway always has their chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. And the one day yeah. I thought I'd, I'd mix it up, and I'm like, oh, no, it's, yeah, it's white chocolate chip macadamia. macadamia I'm like, F it up. And, man, I'm telling you, it, it's a game changer. They're really good. They are oh, yeah. so, but I hate saying it out loud, so I just point, like, yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's an interesting choice. That's I, a strong pick, though, man. He's right. Because to me, it's like there's chocolate chip cookies, which most people universally like, right? Yeah. And then this white chocolate chip macadamia. It's just, I don't know. It's kind of like that with a little sidekick. What about uh, what about just 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 in general? One that you uh, that you don't have to buy at a, at a cookie store, but one you could buy in a grocery store. Do you have a favorite grocery store cookie? Fudge you know, stripes, those, like, that type of deal. Those those like really frosted sugar cookies, you know, like the pink ones and stuff that you get like around Valentine's Day, you know. The kids always bring them into class and stuff. So basically, okay. sugar cookie with sprinkles is what you're talking about. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. There's nothing wrong yeah, with that, man. All right, all right. You know, just your generic cookie, you know. And there's a reason I, I they've been around the, so long. Man. I love the Keebler uh, Elbs a lot. They do pretty well on something. I like the fudge stripe cookie. That used to be my all-time favorite cookie. Then I, I was into Chips Ahoy for a while. I like a chewy Chips Ahoy, the red bag. Yeah, yeah but they don't soak up milk. 
They that's don't. The that's the weird they, thing. They, they, like, but they're already soft, so I didn't feel as disappointed. Yeah. You're right. The milk some will kind of fall milk, off the outside. Some of us drink milk post cookie. What about uh, okay. what about Pepperidge Farms, man? Those are Milano cookies. Ah, uh, they're pretty good. And see, if you open one of those bags, you will eat that entire bag. They have some you really I mean? good cookies. But see, they make cookies seem snooty, and you're like, man, it's just the cookie Pepperidge Farm. Even those famous Amos little tiny chocolate chip cookies are delicious. God damn, they're good. They're they're, they're tough to beat. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, it's National Cookie Day. I did not know. That. Yeah, uh, C is for cookies. Stores uh, put out their Christmas decorations and uh, and cookies. They put those out, too, at this time of year. According to a new survey, they asked people their feelings about cookies, and shockingly, uh, people are really into cookies. Here are some of the results. Only 2% of people say they never eat cookies. 8% of women, 14% of men eat them more than once a day. Uh, slightly prefer the homemade cookies to store-bought ones, 54% to 46 That's about even. 65% of people say they prefer, Ted, chewy cookies over the crunchy ones. Nice. But Oreos are by far <laughs> the most popular brand of cookies. And your dentist loves it. And 43% of us have opened a package of Oreos and eaten an entire row of them in one sitting. <laughs> yeah. There are over 13 Oreos per row, just if you want to... Uh, Take a shot. Don't feel bad. Go. We all do it. Ran a question, question, 844-999. Ola, more of your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Ola, bitch, Ola. You have entered the men's room. Coming up, your guess is as good as mine. Our categories today would be roommates and food. Your guess is as good as mine. Coming up after emails from the men's room at mensroomlive.com. And after random, the random, random question, random, question, random, 844-999-Ola. Random, Hello, Mike. Random, Welcome random, to the men's room. Dilly, dilly. Dilly, dilly. Dilly, dilly. All right there, brother. How you doing today, Mike? Not too bad about yourself. Yeah, I want you to mind your own business. Don't worry about me. Mike, since you're dilly dilly uh what <laughs> liquor got you super drunk? What is the liquor that got you super drunk? Or still does, to this man? Oh, boy. Uh, I was at WSU and went across the border to Moscow, Idaho, to get some black velvet. Ooh, black velvet. What is black and velvet yes, exactly? I Yes. Uh, it's your co-host. Half gallons, half gallons of that for super cheap and tried playing beer pong with it. Oh, Jesus, man. How well, old were you? Just Canadian you, whiskey. Yeah. How old were you when you made this decision? Uh, freshman in college. Okay. So 18, All right. 19. That makes sense. <laughs> and how did that work out for you? Not so good. <laughs> what do you remember most? Do you remember the night or the next day? The next day, waking up with puke in my bed and my roommate gone, having to go and uh, do my laundry the next morning. Luckily, it was my laundry day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've all... Uh, I don't know if I've had a black velvet night or not. I've had a Yukon Jack night. Ooh, I've, I've had, had a black velvet. I've had a Southern Comfort night. Yeah, but, uh, the, Mad Dog was the one where I got my come up in, so to speak, like because it was the first time we're really like drinking, drinking, and it's strawberry jubilee and orange, and I'm like... It doesn't taste bad at all. I can't believe people get messed up on this. Two bottles later, man. I've I've never had. It was the first time I had the spins. I did not know about dropping anchor, and I thought I was so smart. And I'm like, well, if you have the spins, just close your eyes. I didn't realize that when you close your eyes, it speeds up a hundred mm -hmm. times. That was uh, I remember that night, and I wish I did not remember the night. And I remember the next morning, and I wish I did not remember the next. I just morning. gotta remember, black velvet is so smooth because legally. Couldn't call it velvet if it wasn't. That's right. <laughs> Read yeah, what anyway. liquor got you super drunk. Uh, <laughs> possum managed to break into a liquor store in Fort Walton Beach, Florida last week. Ironically enough, where was I last week? Fort Walton Beach. Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And I was in a liquor store. We're not sure why he went in there, but apparently once he liquor. was inside, he took advantage of the situation and he cracked into a bottle of bourbon. An employee found the possum the next morning, passed out drunk, with a broken bottle next to him. They called Animal Control, who took him in to sober him up. And then they released him back into the wild a few days later once he had got his crap together. You know what? Possums like us. <laughs> <laughs> We're undervalued in this cabinet. It's 13 nipples of love, bitches. <laughs> oh, my. Random question, question, 844-999. Ola, more of your calls coming up here in just a couple seconds. Hola! The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network. <laughs> 